Back on July 28th, we published a video covering proposed rule changes by the FTC. Here's an update. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, here today with the amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal, with an update on the FTC rule changes. The attempt by NADA to extend the comment period in the hopes of delaying the implementation of the rules has died on the vine. In a unanimous vote, the FTC board declined NADA's suggestion. Boom. Yeah. Thanks to the many of you who went to the FTC site after seeing our video to urge the passing of the rules, it looks like they will be implemented. Here are some of the details on the proposed rules. As auto prices have surged, the commission is seeking to eliminate the tricks and traps that make it hard or next to impossible to comparison shop vehicles. These tricks leave consumers saddled with thousands of dollars in unwanted junk charges. The dealer will actually have to provide you, the car buyer, with clear, concise information without all the fluff. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> the proposed rule would protect consumers and honest dealers by making the car buyer process more clear and competitive. It would also allow the commission to recover money when consumers are misled or charged without their consent. Read wow. that as great big fines against dealers who break the rules. Here's the bones of these rule changes that every car buyer needs to be keenly aware of because soon you'll have the power to say no to all the nonsense and you will have the law on your side. The rules will ban bait and switch claims. The proposal would prohibit dealers from making a number of deceptive advertising claims to lure in prospective car buyers. This deal deception can include the cost of the vehicle or the terms of financing, the cost of any add-on products or services, whether financing terms are for purchase or lease, the availability of any discounts or rebates, the actual availability of the vehicles being advertised. Yeah. Dealers do that all the time. And whether a financing deal has been finalized among other areas. Once in the door or on the hook, consumers commonly face the fallout of false promises that just don't pan out. The rules will also ban fraudulent junk fees. The proposal would prohibit dealers from charging consumers junk fees for fraudulent add-on products and services that provide no benefit to the consumer, including the joke, nitrogen-filled tires that contain no more nitrogen than normal air. I think we will have to publish a car buyer's guide on these FTC rules so car buyers can easily bust the chops of offending dealers. Won't we, Liz? Yeah, I think we'll have to do that for sure. Uh, also banned are surprise junk fees, something we've educated car buyers on for years. The proposal would prohibit dealers from charging consumers for an add-on without their clear written consent and would require dealers to inform these consumers about the price of the car without any optional add-ons. Now, who of you is actually going to consent to be charged <laughs> a surprise add-on fee? Only an idiot would do <laughs> that. The rules would also require full upfront disclosure of costs and conditions. The proposal would require dealers to make key disclosures to consumers, including providing a true offering price for a vehicle that would be a full price a consumer would pay, excluding only taxes and government fees. Right. It would also require dealers to make disclosures about optional add-on fees, including their price and the fact that they are not required as a condition of purchasing or leasing the vehicle, along with disclosures to consumers with key information about financing terms. No more of this payment proposal nonsense that I mentioned recently that I'd walk out of a dealership over while avoiding the actual price of the car. I'm really proud to say, Kevin, that 2,300 people commented on the FTC page and our viewers made a huge impact on it. Tons of you citizens went to the FTC comment page, you did your part, and loaded it up with your agreement that something needed to be done. Congratulations, guys. Along with the help of other creators here on YouTube, including the guys over at YA, our combined efforts have beaten the NADA in their game to attempt to influence the FTC by slowing the process down. Take that, Mr. Mike Stanton. You are beaten by YouTubers. We'll get this done now, and in large part because of all of you. By the way, if you didn't make it there earlier, there are still two weeks left in the open comment period. Just type in the homework guy on the FTC site search bar when you visit there and you'll be able to see tons of comments from THG viewers. Yes, I couldn't be more proud of our YouTube community of viewers. Together, this gigantic audience is helping to push the car business in the right direction. Yes, take that, Scotty. And no, that's not Scotty Kilmer. Scott was the name of the dealer owner who fired Kevin twice in the same week. After the first firing, he heard I had tons of deliveries lined up and asked me to think about it. 
He was the most crooked person I would ever come to know in the car business. Scott was exactly the nightmare kind of dealer that these FTC rules will hit the hardest. I couldn't be happier. The NIADA, National Independent Automobile Dealers Association, made an almost laughable statement to the FTC, saying the Federal Trade Commission's proposed new advertising and finance and insurance rules would hurt consumers and make vehicles more expensive. <laughs> right, FTC, as they should have, just laughed it off. Crooks protecting crooks. NIADA CEO Robert Voltman said, Independent auto dealers are small business owners and the proposed rule from the FTC has the potential to negatively impact the ability of our members to operate their businesses. He left off a key word, dishonestly. He should have said, <laughs> the rules will negatively impact the ability of our members to operate their businesses dishonestly. That would have been an honest quote. Yeah. You were speaking of being happy to see these rules go into effect, Kevin. I'm happy to report that we've received good news from several viewers who are testing the MPG X cap. Before that outro video rolls, I want to add that we don't want to give false hope to owners of hybrids and other high fuel economy vehicles. If you bought a car specifically for the excellent gas mileage that it gets, perhaps just be content with that. The exhaust gas recirculation technology it likely has already finds a way to utilize a high percentage of the unburned fuel that most older vehicles waste. Right. But for anyone else out there, like the gentleman who texted me today to say he owns a 2003 GMC 2500, a 2001 Toyota Sequoia, and a 99 Chevy Blazer, the X-Cap is nothing short of a miracle product for fuel economy. And that's exactly why we will continue to share it here on this channel. Tons of vehicles like this on the road. And I've noticed that diesel trucks seem to get some of the best results. Yes. I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, signing off with the amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. Stick around, everyone, for the informational outro. We gotta go. save you money on your fuel prices, gasoline, and diesel. Would you like more info? Yeah. If your answer is yes, hold that thought. MPG Extreme Caps, the multifunctional answer to get the most from the fuel you buy. Simply add one MPG Extreme Cap before filling up, and each MPG Extreme Cap treats 11 to 20 gallons. This fast-dissolving, 100% active combustion catalyst is formulated to maximize performance and economy, improves power and performance, increases octane, keeps injectors clean, inhibits carbon deposits, and last but not least, reduces emissions up to 40%. If you look at the action of a standard automobile or internal combustion engine, the four cycles involved are the intake cycle, the compression cycle, the power cycle, and the exhaust cycle. What actually happens in a standard automobile without the X-cap is that the combustion cycle does not complete the combustion. In fact, if you take the exhaust manifold off most ICE engines, you'd see fire exiting the exhaust ports during the exhaust cycle. This is due to the fact that most fuel available to the public burns dirty and is poorly refined. Now, once the X-cap enters the fuel system, whether it be gasoline or diesel, the tablet dissolves and disperses in the fuel. The fuel becomes a carrier and takes the X-cap, which is a fuel catalyst, into the combustion chamber. In the combustion chamber, the catalyst accelerates and optimizes the combustion, causing the fuel burn to complete in the combustion chamber itself. This subsequently yields more horsepower and reduces temperature in the exhaust, dropping the exhaust temperature. Now you no longer see fire in the exhaust ports. This increases the efficiency of the engine, both in better gas mileage and in horsepower, and reduces emissions.